The next day, while at school, Himari asked Akane what she wanted to eat, but Akane looked exhausted and even fell asleep on the ground. She hit her head on the wall and said that she had just dozed off for a second. Himari was worried that Akane would hurt herself if she kept falling asleep like that. Akane assured Himari that she would be careful next time. When they sat down for lunch, Himari continued to lecture Akane about the dangers of falling asleep in public. She also realized that Akane was not getting enough sleep at night because she was studying so hard. Akane refused to relax her studies, even though she knew it was affecting her health. She said that she had to keep pushing herself if she wanted to get good grades. Himari disagreed, arguing that Akane's health was more important than her grades. She also pointed out that Akane would never be able to beat Huju, no matter how hard she studied. When Himari mistakenly said that Akane would never be able to beat Huju, Akane became determined to prove her wrong. She said that she would do whatever it takes, even if it took her a hundred years to defeat him. She would wipe him off the floor and make him admit that she was the superior one. Just then, Huju and Shisei entered the room. Akane glared at Huju, telling him that he better prepare himself. Huju looked at her in surprise, not knowing what she was talking about. Then when Himari and Akane both sit on their table, Himari states that Akane is quite amazing, as she is never able to study that much since she is always looking at her phone, distracted, and watching videos all the time. Akane sits silent for a while claiming that it is nothing like she hates studying, and adding that there is someone supporting her right now, which gets Himari excited. When Himari continues to guess who the person is, she keeps on guessing wrong and after a while she ends up yelling saying that she knows who the person is. Then Himari shouts and willingly claims that the culprit must be a maid, and Akane hides the fact by saying that she is being honest by guessing the fact. While Himari continues to guess and keeps on embracing her, Akane feels like there is no way she is about to waste his energy of supporting her by failing in the end. On the other hand, when it comes to the time of sleeping, Huju wonders if she had been studying hard like the other days once again, and that night before going to bed, he went on to deliver the sweet cake to her once again. He suggests that she was awake at 3 a.m. last night so there is no way she should be doing something like that, as the regular time she falls asleep is at 12 a.m. according to his knowledge. But Akane insists that she wants to study 20 more pages to avoid sleeping this early, and Huju feels like he should not have such a hard time if she was someone who would listen to him. She continues to keep the habit up for every day, and one day when he brings her the snack, he finds Akane sleeping on the table and suggests that she should go to sleep already. When he notices that she is huffing and puffing on her own and getting all sweaty, he feels like she is getting sick, so he touches her forehead only to see that her body's temperature is rising over and over quite continuously. Huju takes her to the bed and throws the blanket on her only to check out that she has a high fever. As he makes her take medicine for the fever, Akane claims that she is all sweaty, and Huju claims that he will be taking care of her. Huju continues to get confused as he doesn't even have experience with such a high temperature fever, and hopes that she will be fine as he wipes her body with a wet cloth. Then as the night continues he notices that the matter is getting worse and worse so the medicine might not be working as it is supposed to do. He thinks that it might be quite serious to begin with and continues to wonder why he is quite worried about her, despite having her as his enemy in the first place. She keeps on coughing saying that she will be needing to study more, and Huju angrily claims that her studying habit is the reason why she is sick. After hearing him out, Akane claims that she will be needing to do it anyways, since she has a dream as she wants to become a doctor in her life. She claims that she wants to become someone who can immediately help someone to get better and hates that she cannot help anyone right now. She ends up revealing that she doesn't even have the money for medical school, but as her grandmother promised her that she will help, she is trying her best to achieve her dream on her own. After hearing her out, Huju starts to believe that they both must be alike deep in their hearts, and Akane shouts out claiming that he can just lie around and still get good grades, but she faces the opposite when that happens. He claims that there is a big difference in talent, so she shouldn't be dwelling much on that, but Akane claims that she hates him and admires him at the same time. But the word admires shocks Huju, so he questions her, but she keeps on avoiding saying anything as she didn't want to say anything about it. Then Huju gets the idea of Akane admiring her but notices that she is burning up even more and more as time passes. Huju decides that he will be calling the ambulance but she adds that he doesn't need to make a big deal out of it since she will be fine. As they argue she adds that if someone dies in an emergency as the ambulance is about to come for her, she will never be able to forgive herself for that in the end. Then Huju thinks of calling a taxi and realizes that they do not have anything available right now because of drunk office goers. Huju knows that there is a 10 minute bus ride to the closest hospital, but the buses aren't even running right now, and Akane continues to press him saying that he shouldn't be worrying as he has school the next day. At that time, Huju has already taken Akane in his hand saying that there is no way he would be leaving his wife in danger, and he continues to run on the road while carrying her like that. 
While running, he thinks that Akani might be quite energetic and acting like she is harder than everyone. But in reality, she is nothing but a fragile girl, and he promises that he will be doing anything to make her dream come true. When Akani continues to dwell in his arms, Uju claims that Akani must be pretty strong, and he wants to know more about her as he rushes through the streets at night. Even though he had married the girl that he hates the most in an ill-fated event, he is sure that the marriage will end happily ever in the end. The next scene shifts to Huju sleeping and even though Akani continues to make him wake up, he claims that he will be taking a day off from school. But as the matter gets serious, Akani claims that she will be using a sizzling pan to get him to wake up, even though he wouldn't like it that much. As he wakes up hurriedly, Akani greets him and it seems that it has been a week since the night when Akane was heavily sick. But now Akani is back to her normal self and she continues to lecture Huju as he didn't go to school without even washing his face and Huju feels like he is easing up around her. Huju claims that as he was running in the rain, he didn't think of washing his face which makes Akani feel like she's talking to some caveman in the first place. But she doesn't like the ideas that he provides since there is a chance that he will be getting sick in the rain and he claims that he would have taken medicine. But Akani claims that it is not something like that because people must be washing their faces but Huju continues to argue through the points over and over again. Akani claims that he might be good at studying, but he is quite garbage when it comes to anything else. Huju thinks that she might not have the right to say something like that as she had said something in the past. Then he even gets on with making a face, reacting like how Akani was the night when she was sick and the word admiration starts to get Akani nervous more and more. But she claims that it must not be taken normally since she was hallucinating, and Huju adds that he even has a recording on his phone so he thinks of showing it to someone in school. They continue to run up to each other for that, as Akani claims that she will be throwing his phone into a volcano for sure. Even though Huju was trying so hard to make it less clumsy, it is continuing to get more and more messy, and when he notices Akani peeking, he adds that he was just joking about the recording. But Akani seems to be interested in knowing what kind of salad dressing he would like, and Huju thinks that he will be having sweet onions. Akani suggests he should get ready as soon as possible so he can eat up and go on to school soon. Then when Huju gets into the classroom, Shisei directly rushes to him claiming that she is checking her daily routine as if she is fulfilling her important task of the day, which only feels strange to Huju. Shisei continues to smell him for research purposes for the girl, and she ends up smelling that he had a fulfilling breakfast. Then after thinking for a while, Shisei claims that he must have been dating bacon and eggs at the time, and Huju realizes that Shisei must have skipped her breakfast and now she is hungry for that reason. The ruckus keeps on growing as Shisei continues to be her playful self. Soon Huju meets Himari outside of the classroom, and she congratulates Huju on achieving a good mark once again in yesterday's quiz. She claims that she is an idiot and she keeps on looking up to him. As the matter comes to quirkiness, Himari thinks that he must be quite quirky at the same time, since he is great when it comes to studying. She adds that he must be quite dense, and as she continues to get pretty close to him, Himari notices that he is blushing on his own. Then Himari keeps on moving saying that she was just kidding, and Huju feels like even though she might be quite friendly, she is hard to deal with. On the other hand, Akani had been taking note of both of them and was now mad at him. Soon she comes closer to him, saying that he already has a wife so there is no way he should be getting along too much with some other woman at the time. Then Huju realizes that even though he would have been thinking that things are quite normal now, he notices that Akani has been acting really differently. When Akani blushing hard on her own gets into the classroom, Himari asks her to meet at the cafe once again. At the same time, Huju thinks that Akani is quite cute as he keeps on blushing as well. At the time of Huju getting ready to eat the food, Akani starts asking him what he thinks about the food, and he thinks that he wouldn't normally expect something like this to be in a breakfast meal. Akani thinks that he is suggesting that he is tasting something like this in the first time of his life, and thinks that Huju will be finally submitting to her. Huju doesn't think that he will be losing by eating such a good meal, and Akani claims that the dog which ate the millet dumplings eventually became a part of Momotaro's reunite, and Huju tries his best to claim that he isn't a dog in this whole scenario. Huju thinks that he might be wrong about Akani's cute sides as he is now going back to her previous personality, and he brings up the topic of what she meant by not communicating with the other girls that day. Then Akani starts to get nervous as she doesn't know what to say to him, and Huju states that he just wants to know the motive behind her sayings that day. Akani suggests that she wasn't meaning anything extra by saying something like that, and adds that she doesn't even know why she was saying something like that. She asks what he can be thinking of after hearing her say that, and Huju feels like he might have been expecting too much from her, and thinks that he might have been thinking about it in the opposite way from reality. Then when Akani thinks that she needs to say something, she brings up that her grandmother will not be happy after seeing him with another girl as well, so they might lose all the money for their marriage. 
which starts to get into Huju. As Akani moves on from there, he adjusts in the end, knowing that they have been staying as a married couple since they are both thinking of achieving their own goals, so there is no way he should be thinking about her words too deeply, so he thinks of reflecting on it. Then as he finishes eating some of the high nutrients plants in Akani's garden, he starts heading to school and starts thinking of getting into his own classroom. But before he is about to get inside, Akani charges at him which makes him think that she might be getting for his life, and feels like this might be his last day on earth. But in the end, Akani lets him hold the lunchbox demanding to know why he couldn't bring his bento with him, as it was just left on the table. Then when it is time to part ways, Akani adds that she had to put all of her effort into making them so he better eat them all till the end. Then Huju thinks to himself that the face she makes sometimes is enough to make him forget that she is his natural enemy, as if she is the person that he loves the most in the world. Then while they head outside of the classroom, Akani remarks that the eggs are on sale right now, and she suggests to him that he shouldn't be getting used to luxury by making a bad habit. Huju compliments by saying that she is quite earnest, and she adds that he is not about to get anything by praising her. While moving their way, Akani claims that they have to continue acting like strangers, as they have to keep the idea of the marriage secret from the others as much as they can. At lunchtime, Shise comes in claiming that she is hungry and she starts haggling with Huju as she wants to eat the box he came in with. Huju claims that she might have eaten already and it seems that Shie isn't satisfied even though she had to eat three beef bowls before. She knows that talking about his wife will calm Huju down so she brings up that and claims that she has a very bad memory. Huju proves that she is lying as she scores perfectly in math and she blows a killing move on him as she wants to eat his lunch this time for sure. The begging pose starts to make him weak and all the others inside the classroom start supporting her as well, and he claims that he will be giving her one bite in the end. But at that moment, Himari comes in saying that his lunch is the same as Akani's which shocks him to death, and he continues to lie to her saying that it sure isn't, but Himari has already seen the food inside which makes it look quite similar. At that moment everyone comes in saying that she is right so Akani might have made it for him as they are dating. But Akani comes in saying that they aren't dating but everyone thinks that she is lying since her face is bright red right now. It is true that they aren't dating since they are married, but everyone keeps on haggling with Akani since the whole thing looks kind of suspicious to them. They predict that Huju and Akani have been acting like a married couple for a long time, and talking about lunch when Huju goes on to take a look, he notices that the box is empty, as she say ends up eating it all. Everyone starts to get away, knowing that the matter is resolved and Shise claims that he must be thanking her for what she had done. But even so, Shise becomes honest saying that she was hungry and she would have eaten it anyways. Knowing that Shise has saved both of them, Huju gives some head pats to Shise and thinks of having a meeting with Akani in an empty classroom. They think that the others are about to find out that they are married soon enough, and they sense that the school might expel them as they will be portrayed as a bad example for the others. Huju thinks of avoiding having lunch in the cafeteria for the time being, as they think that people will think of them the correct way if they see them eating together. Also, the idea of the others finding out their location where they live is even trickier for them if it gets found out, and everyone is about to listen to them from outside while they are discussing their backup plans. Then when they are about to enter, Huju and Akani notice that and get under a bench at the same time. Akani and Huju start feeling kind of rough as they continue to stick with each other too close. They sense that the situation will be quite bad as they are taking the teacher's desk, and the feeling of getting found out starts to rush through their head which starts to terrify them. But soon their mind changes and Himari suggests that they will be needing to use the one outside of the room, which feels like a good idea to the others. They go their separate ways when everyone leaves the room, and the moment Huju takes the detour he ends up meeting Himari on the way. While laughing at each other's comments, Himari changes the topic and seriously asks him if his lunch was made by Akane or not, but even though he tries his best to sway her ideas she keeps on looking into the matter thoroughly. When Huju presses onto the situation Himari claims that she will clear the confusion from everyone else's mind, and Huju thinks that it will be quite a relief since they will be believing her. On the other hand, Himari asks if she likes Huju while they are having a cup of coffee in the middle of the cafe they used to hang out at. One time at home, as Huju is reading one book, he feels like someone is taking note of him and he feels like somebody's watching him from too close, and the entity is getting closer and closer to him each moment. The person ends up being Akani who starts acting like she is taking note of something, and Akani suggests to him that he should continue to do whatever he is doing. She claims that professional monkeys can do whatever they want at the zoo even though people keep looking at them. And when Huju reacts, Akani calls him an amateur monkey instead. She claims that she is now observing her husband for obvious reasons. And the scene shifts back to the cafe when Himari continues to converse with her about Huju. She could only tell that she doesn't care about him that much and even though she asks Himari why she would have been asking this, she decides not to answer her. 
Then after staying silent for a while, Himari reveals that she truly likes Huju, which makes Akane to ask her what is so good about him anyways. And Himari regards that everything about him is great in the first place. She adds that the moment they were preparing for their athletes meet, and one day when one of her friends collapsed from being affected by the heat, and even though Himari herself panicked at the moment, Huju continued to help the girl the best way possible by keeping his calm. He continued to direct his friends on how to start treatment of the girl temporarily to get her into a better shape, and Himari thinks that he must have acted like a king back then by making something like it happen. Himari thinks that he is someone who can be depended on, unlike the other guys, and Akane thinks that she might be right as she herself doesn't have any kind of self-respect. When it comes to kindness, Akane thinks that Himari is on point if she gets the same feeling from him, and Akane thinks that she truly knows a lot of good things about Huju, which is frustrating. She also adds that everyone would be staring at her chest but not someone like him, which gets Akane even more shocked than ever. Then when Akane gets serious about all the sexual harassment charges, Himari claims that she wouldn't mind much if Huju is the one staring at her. Akane realizes that Himari is truly serious about Huju after all, and Akane feels like she is being separated from the rest of the world as she continues to feel some kind of emptiness. Then Himari claims that Akane will need to make Huju fall in love with her, which starts to sadden and silence her at that moment. Akane thinks that she has no reason to say no to her, as the marriage that they are holding on to right now is nothing but a name, and they have no choice but to live with each other. She thinks that she will be able to do anything for her best friend, and claims that she will be doing her best to help her. But Akane also wonders what she must be doing, and Himari states that she can start by knowing more about Uju, such as what he likes and his hobbies. Now that Akane is ready to help her, she is taking a notepad in her hand to take notes of him. Uju starts rushing into his study room feeling like he's being threatened, and the moment he feels like she has been watching him once again he finds herself stalking him from afar. Now he thinks that he might have been wrong about Akane and her feelings, and he feels like he is never going to be able to understand her in the first place. She continues to film him even when he is eating, and when Huju doesn't understand, Akane suggests that she would never be able to tell him about it as she is ready to take the secret to her grave. Suddenly, she starts asking if he likes big boobs, and Huju is shocked to hear her purpose in asking these questions. Then as he keeps staring at her, Akane understands it and he continues to wonder what he might be answering her as if he is about to lose his mind. She claims that he is just a man, and he should just answer her question then, when he doesn't understand anything, Akane gives a hint of Himari's size. They continue to talk about even fishes like guppies while arguing about sizes, and knowing that they aren't about to make any progress, they move on with food. When it continues he thinks that she might have been asking these as she might want to cook something cool for him, and he continues to wait for the next day. Then the next day Akane finally arrives with the idea to Hinami saying that she finally knows what kind of girl Huju likes as if she ended up making a huge achievement after a long time. Himari starts asking about it to her excitedly, and Akane claims that he surely doesn't like girls who look like guppies, but they continue to wonder what a guppy-like girl must mean in the first place. Himari thinks that a guppy-like girl means that one would have a healthy body having a high fertility rate, meaning that he doesn't like sexy women in general. She adds that he might like raw meat and raw garlic at the same time, which makes them realize that he might be wilder than what they have guessed. Himari thanks Akane for getting all of this information for her, saying that it is quite useful for her and Akane claims that it is no problem for her, since she had been doing this for her friend. Then when she gets back home, she suggests Huju to clean the bathroom and change the trash as she will be preparing the dinner. Huju excitedly claims that he will be doing all that, but the moment he hears that she is about to prepare fish for the dinner, his face changes and turns pale. He adds that he might not have any kind of complaints but wonders when they are about to have steak, and Akane states that she isn't about to prepare steak for some reason. He claims that when she asked what he would like, she might have been preparing for something special related to steak, and Akane thinks that even though she doesn't hate the feeling, she refrains herself from speaking anymore. Akane thinks that even though she might not have a childish side, he surely does, and she had never expected something like that. Huju claims that he doesn't and tries his best to sway the topic from there, and Akane keeps on teasing him for making a face deeming that he surely hates fish. In the end, Akane thinks that his feelings cannot be helped, and she will be taking full responsibility for it because of him. The idea of responsibility starts to roll over inside his head, and Akane states that for someone like him who wants to eat her cooking, she will be buying the ingredients to prepare the steak so he should be acting like someone who is grateful for it. After hearing this, Huju states that he will be going with her since it will not be that safe for her to get outside alone at this time of the night and it starts to get Akane getting creeps, assuming that he might have been planning something in his mind. 
Uju then changes the topic saying that he is thinking of the steak and nothing else as he will be feeling quite miserable if she doesn't come back. Akani then thinks that if he really thinks about steak that much, it means that the idea cannot be helped and suggests that he can do whatever he wants. While walking back in the direction of their home, Akani states that she had been enjoying this period of time as it gives her some kind of light and fluffy feeling which is rather nostalgic for her. She claims that it reminds her of the time when she was still a child who was looking forward to the dinner that her mother was about to cook for her. But Huju thinks that he doesn't enjoy the idea at all, since it doesn't have anything to do with him in the first place. As they are in front of the convenience store, they notice that one drunk guy is smoking heavily in front of the store. Huju thinks that he might have guessed right as the place has a bad reputation for nighttime policing, but instead of being careful about it, Akani confronts the guy demanding him to answer if he doesn't know that the place has a sign of no smoking in the first place. Then when the man gets lightning struck after hearing her, she adds that cigarettes are bad not just for the smoker but also the people around him and the environment since he is putting them in danger, and Huju thinks that they are really about to get into problems right now. The weird guy starts to ask Akani if she wants to get killed, and Akani claims that she is not that afraid of his barbaric death threats, which makes Huju think that she herself is acting quite savagely as well. As the man stands up protesting her comments, Huju notices that Akani is shaking the whole time as if she is about to pee herself, which makes Huju realize that she must be quite a reckless person. He gets in the middle saying that both of them should be calming down and claims that there is a better way to resolve things since there is a better way to lecture someone. Then when Akani keeps on arguing with Huju, he ends up poking on her forehead, which makes her claim that she will be hurting him a hundred million times over later back at home. The man then angrily claims that they are flirting after annoying him which means that they must have been looking down on him the whole time. As the man is about to make a fist, Huju starts asking what he is about to do as the shaking hands are an act of reconciliation. Huju warns the man saying that if he hurts Akane somehow, he will be ruining his family and everything around him which makes the man run away from the spot almost instantly. Then when they get inside of the store, Akane claims that she might have knocked out the thug almost instantly, so he shouldn't have done anything. Then he mockingly adds that he decided to jump in because he could see that someone was shivering, and Akane continues to hide her feelings, thinking that it must be some kind of his cool point as well. After taking a look at him, she starts feeling sorry for herself, and thanks him inside of her mind worrying that it would feel like she had given up. So, instead of thanking him directly, she promises that she will be giving her everything to prepare the steak, and Huju continues to feel like he will be looking forward to it eagerly. When they are back home and Huju is sitting at the table to eat dinner, he notices that the steak is looking quite professional compared to the restaurant style. She adds that as she got truly serious about preparing the dinner, it ended up becoming a piece of cake for her, and suggests that he should start eating already. Then, as he takes a bite on the meat, he feels like he's about to lose his mind to the delicious outer layer of the meat and the inside of the meat starts feeling like it is as soft as jelly. The moment the juicy flavor of the meat starts to spread inside of his throat, he thinks that he will be demanding more and more. Then when she asks if the food was good he quickly claims that it was surely terrible, and he states that he meant it in a good sense after all. Then Akani doesn't understand what he is saying in the first place, since there is no way one would vomit in a good sense after all. Huju states that he doesn't know either, and thinks that they will be needing to stop the discussion of vomiting while eating something like this. He thinks to himself that he is always praising her but he cannot get it across on his own. She starts chattering up about the vomiting topic even more since she starts to confuse herself over it which forces Huju to thank her, and close the topic almost instantly. Then when he starts eating the rice bowl, he feels the real tenderness of the seafood, which makes him feel like he is now swimming in the ocean to hunt his own fish, while the rice carries a strong taste and texture. As he keeps on eating the rice eagerly, Akani reveals that she ended up adding some beef from the curry in it since he likes the steak too much, and he gets properly satisfied by her creativity as if she truly knows about her taste bud. Uju thinks that her palea is getting to satisfy him properly, even though the experience that he had with his grandfather in the restaurant wasn't even that pleasant for him in the first place. When it comes to the soup in front of him, Akani introduces the soup to be Aho soup, and it seems that she ended up making the soup after looking on the internet since this is the only soup that goes well with Palia. The more he continues to eat the soup he feels like she has wanted his intelligence to drop as much as it can, and once again the food ends up satisfying him in the end. Huju guesses that she had been using garlic in it and he remembers that the soup might be garlic soup after all since Aho is garlic but in Spanish. Then Akani claims that she knows about it after all, and Huju calls it bullshit, adding that she had been trying to lower his intelligence this whole time. Then when Akani tries to act like she doesn't even know about it, Huju continues to stare at him which gets her even more nervous than ever. Huju ends up laughing after seeing her face in the end, and when he keeps on smiling at her, she ends up asking him if he would be able to eat the whole thing without even vomiting, 
The idea of vomiting makes Huju feel like she might be quite an idiot, but decides not to answer her directly, sensing that the hostility between them will continue to rise once again. Then he ends up saying that everything that was served on the table for him was absolutely delicious for him. Akani tries to mishear and makes a face like all he wanted to say was that the food he was served was complete trash. Then when Huju tries his best to explain that he considers that the food was made better than the professional cooks, Akani claims that there is no way he would be praising her after all since he must have been laying some kind of trap. In the end, he ends up saying that he truly wants her to cook for her every day, and it feels to Akani that he wants her to marry him, portraying that it must be some kind of marriage proposal to her. Then Huju tries to avoid answering the question since they are already married, and Akani finally feels like he ended up getting how talented she really is. She understands his feelings and claims that she will continue to make various dishes for him as much as he wants, questioning him about what he wants her to make, as she is ready to feed him to his heart's content tonight. Without even noticing, Akani keeps on getting close to Huju and he ends up feeling the intensity, and he ends up saying that it must be too close for him. Akani avoids answering the situation saying that she did that on purpose, assuming that he might not be able to hear her from afar. He ends up asking her if he could have more steak for him, and Akani states that he might be shocked but she ends up stocking more meat for him. As Akani lays the slab of meat on the table, Akani answers him that he ended up forgetting the stuff, and went back to the supermarket only to buy the slab of meat at that time. He thinks that it will be enough for a month, but Akani thinks that they might have to finish it in the night. When he starts to react, she claims that as the meat is about to expire, she will have to forcefully shove it into his body as she will be minimizing the loss of the waste of food. Huju feels like he is seeing a demon girl in front of him and as he gets on to move on, Akane states that she will not let him sleep as she continues to make more steak for him. As the whole commotion settles down, Huju continues to feel like Akane must be the devil herself, and he feels like he will be needing to bring some strawberries to protect himself so he can throw them on her when everything goes wrong. Then, as he feels like he is about to lose consciousness, Akane tries to get him to lie down correctly, and she thinks that she must have done too much against him and says sorry to him. At that moment, when she looks back she looks at some kind of black figure behind her as if someone is staring at her so she starts yelling her lungs out. Then after hearing her yell, Huju wakes up demanding to know if someone from the Centaurus star ended up attacking them in the end. He notices that Akani is shivering on her own quote greatly as she claims that she had seen some ghost appearing behind her, which starts to make him feel quite stupid. He states that there is nothing but she keeps insisting that there was something a while ago as if she could see some white and pale face muttering some kind of nonsense that she was unable to pick up, so she thinks that it might have been some kind of cursed doll, as if it was something dangerous to begin with. Realizing that Akani has gone mad and has been seeing bullshit, Huju says goodnight to him and Akani requests him to get up and not leave her alone since she cannot do it on her own. He mockingly claims that she will not be alone since Mother Earth has been giving everyone strength to fight their fear which just feels like a random answer to Akani, as she feels like he just wants to go back to sleep after ignoring her. She makes it clear that she isn't about to let him fall asleep while she is in quite a clumsy situation, and starts asking Huju if he has any sense of danger after all, and asks what he would be planning to do if some ghost appears and thinks of taking his soul. Then feeling that she would continue to bother her even more, Huju brings a note writing evil spirit be gone and suggests to hold it above so the ghost will disappear on her own. Then as some kind of sound starts to occur, Akani jumps onto him while crying and when he thinks of checking it out, she requests that he will have to stay with him instead of checking it out on his own. Then as time passes, Huju thinks that she will end up forgetting about the ghost the next day, but she comes in saying that the ghost ended up appearing once again. She claims that she had been hearing footsteps while she was studying in the living room like someone was purposefully walking too close to her. Huju suggests that she needs to take a photo of the corridor as proof and she thinks that the smartphone will end up blowing if she does something like that, as the ghosts are supposed to have some kind of firepower, to begin with. Then Huju ends up leaving for the toilet suggesting that she should stay in his room until he is done, and when he sits on to have a release, she suggests that he should keep the door open, and Huju says that there is no way he is about to do that. After that time, Akani keeps on following Huju everywhere as if she is afraid of walking alone at the house, and Huju feels like Akani is now a chick or a spot-billed duck chick as if she is following her mother duck. When Akani goes on to take a bath, Huju feels like he is about to feel some peace after all this time and even though he keeps his eyes closed, she comes back in a second saying that it would be dangerous for her to have a bath alone so he could join her. The idea of having a bath with her starts rushing ideas into Huju's mind which starts to get him embarrassed a lot, and she keeps on asking if he will be okay with it. 
Huju keeps on sitting in front of the door in the end, knowing that it was about to happen anyways, and he keeps on thinking about her body and he starts to think of the weirdest things to lose the lustful thoughts out of his head. Then, as he keeps on acting like a Zen monk who is trying to evade lust, keeping himself silent, Akani comes out rushing naked demanding to know why he didn't answer him. The idea of her coming out makes him once again realize that he doesn't have a safe place to live at home as he is about to lose his sanity. The next morning, Huju meets with Shisei and starts talking about Akane, and she realizes that he is now grumbling about his wife. He starts explaining how Akane is talking about some kind of ghost that is appearing in their house who she can hear sometimes, as the ghost keeps on walking close to her leaving her terrified in the end. Then when she asks him if he has been seeing the ghost, he claims that it must be some kind of rat to begin with and nothing else, and even though he had been trying his best to help her understand, she does not understand. Soon Shisei claims that there must be an actual ghost and he should be careful since there is no way he should be keeping it alone for much time. Then when he states that that will mean Akane will get on to knowing about Shisei knowing everything, and it worries him, but Shisei claims that he can just leave that up to her and she will take care of it. At that moment, Shisei reaches out to Akane saying that she is married to her brother, and Akane starts beating the hell out of him while he keeps saying that he is innocent. At that moment, Shisei claims that all of their family members know about their marriage, and even his grandfather's subordinate had been telling her the truth all this time which makes Akane to realize the truth. Then Shisei goes on to solve the ghost problem and she starts to vent about how Huju doesn't even believe her in the first place. Shisei grabs her face saying that Akane had been trying her best, and as she utters that she is speaking about the ghost being true, Akane ends up crying and Shisei claims that she will take a look at her home. Akane believes in Shisei, and Huju worries that something will go wrong if Akane starts to believe her in the end but she assures Huju that it will be fine as it is some part of the act. Huju claims that he will be counting on Shisei, and they end up making their way into the house, and Shisei keeps on making the matter even more serious for the moment. Shisei states that she will make it fine as she will be taking care of it, and as she starts to take a look inside the fridge, Shisei takes out a box full of kinapira, adding that it might explode, and Huju understands that she just wants to eat it. When they get in front of the study room of Huju, Shisei states that there are a lot of erotic scenes in the book that her brother reads, and both Akane and Shisei continue to think of confiscating them. Shisei even ends up discovering the underwear of Huju, and when Akane suggests that there is no ghost in the room, Shisei starts wondering if she doesn't want her panties to be excavated, and Akane suggests that they should keep on looking for ghosts normally. After getting into the bedroom, Shisei starts acting all high and mighty as if she is identifying the ghost. After staying silent for a while, she identified the ghost to be Shisei as she had been coming to this house to play for a few days in a row and Huju understood what was happening. It seems that the old man ended up giving her the key so she ended up entering the house without even telling Huju. But as she thought that she shouldn't disturb a couple spending their own way, she decided to hide the fact that she has the key to the house. Then in the end, Shisei claims that she wants to have the cooking taste of Akane as her prize for solving the ghost case, and she says that the moment she ended up tasting her bento box, she continued to crave more. As the night deepens when Shisei finishes eating her food, Huju suggests that she should be staying with them. Both of them continue to feed each other the whole time which starts to annoy the hell out of Akane as she thinks that they might get along too well. When Akane seems mad, Huju starts asking Akane about it but she claims that nothing is wrong, and Huju continues to hope that Shisei will end up fixing her eating manners. Then Shisei starts requesting that she want to spend time with her brother by playing Zumatsu Hazard 3, but he thinks that they need to refrain themselves for the night since Akane is not that good when it comes to horror. He suggests that he has some kind of cat action game that he bought for playing with Akane recently, but Akane claims that she will be busy preparing for lessons, so she avoids playing the game. Shisei notices that Huju is quite good at playing the game, and even though Huju thinks that she will be good playing it alone, she asks for his help while playing the game. While playing the game she keeps on holding his hand and Akane gets annoyed the hell out of it because of their closeness. Realizing that the night is deepening, Huju thinks of taking a bath and Shisei claims that she will be entering with him, but Akane starts yelling saying that it is not about to happen since she is the same as them. Then when Akane and Huju both are alone, it seems that they have managed to give Shisei a bed in the game so she is spending her time alone. When Huju feels like Akane wants to have him alone, Akane claims that she just wanted to complain about a lot of things but she didn't want to do it in front of Shisei. Then he claims that he will be listening to her complaints, and in the end, she mentions that she wanted to play the game even before Shisei while making a puppy face. Huju thinks that she wanted to beat them at the game, and she thinks that he wouldn't understand and gives up on it. After arguing for a while she feels refreshed once again, but she states that she has another complaint which is about Shisei, and she thinks that he pays too much attention to her, and Huju thinks that it is normal for him to do so as she is quite different from the others. 
Akani realizes that there is no problem after all, and she wonders why she was even complaining in the first place. As time passes, Shisei rushes into the room to hold Akani's boob, saying that they are unexpectedly big, and Akani is surprised to see that she is still awake at this time while Huju is sleeping. Shisei confronts her saying that she was jealous as she was flirting with him, and even catches her to lie at the moment. Shisei states that she surely cannot fool her eyes, and she adds that her brother is quite dull so he wouldn't get it anyway in the end. When Akani doesn't understand what she means, Shisei states that she is now relieved because she was worried about her brother living peacefully, and even though Akani doesn't understand anything, Shisei ends up getting into the blanket and lays down beside her brother, and Akani keeps on shouting the whole night asking if she has shame or not. The next day, Huju ends up falling asleep in the middle of the class, and Himari starts asking him out by calling his name as he looks rather tired on his own. She starts telling him that the class has already ended, and they will have to go to the special classroom right now so Huju thanks her for waking him up. She playfully asks if he had been watching certain videos the whole night, but he adds that there is no way he has been doing that, but she considers that as a lie. She even goes on to ask what kind of porn he had been watching this whole time but he yells at her to make her understand he wasn't watching any kind of cheeky videos for real. She then ends up asking him what kind of girl he truly likes and blushes at the same time, adding that she has already heard that he doesn't like sexy girls even a bit. He wonders who must have said that to her but she keeps on saying that it must be a secret for him which he doesn't have to know right now. As they continue to bicker with each other about his type, he thinks that falling in love with someone because of their looks might be quite childish for him, and he thinks that if someone ends up marrying Shisei or Akani for their looks, that person will find himself to be in such a problematic situation. After hearing Huju talk, Himari starts to believe that it must be nice after all and when he starts asking why it would be nice for her, she avoids answering the question and claims that he must be quite thoughtful if he thinks something like that. She adds that all of the people that came in to ask her out doesn't know her that much, and he believes that beautiful people must have it really hard after all. Then as he calls her beautiful she thinks that he must be quite daring after all, and he thinks that he used that word as his expression to say what he wanted to say. She adds that he must be knowledgeable when it comes to relationships and asks if he is a virgin after all. The word virgin starts to take a toll on him, and he thinks that being a virgin doesn't have to relate to the topic they are discussing right now, and realizes that she must be having too much fun by teasing him. She then claims that she is glad that the both of them are quite the same when it comes to that, but the idea of her being a virgin starts to get him nervous, so he remarks that he has to get to the classroom already. As she starts making an erotic face, she starts whispering in his ears, asking if he thinks about her after all and in what way. When he doesn't understand what she means, she claims that she was just kidding back then and thinks that he must be quite cute when he is flustered. She thinks that she had outdone herself, and as she takes her leave he starts wondering why must have he been getting flustered as he doesn't know about girls at all. Then Himari thinks that she has to keep herself calm if she needs to tease him on her own. At home, when Huju gets into his study room, he notices that Akani is there and as he notices that she is surprised, she starts claiming that she wasn't doing or saying anything. She starts asking him for a book that he would recommend to her as she is interested to know if he is interested in books. It seems that Himari was the one who wanted her to ask him, and he ends up getting her the book of humanity's history through food and weapons, as it ended up making him laugh. The heaviness of the book worries Akani as she doubts that anyone would laugh while reading such a heavy book in the first place. As he begins explaining the book and the political aspects of the book, she feels that the book must not be a light read after all, and feels that now she will have to deal with it till the end. As she has successfully reported the book to Himari, she brings it to the school for her, and thinks that she should have asked for a better book from him. Himari thinks that it will be okay, and she has the task that she is supposed to do. When Himari goes on to ask about the book to Huju, he starts asking her if she would even be able to read out a single character from the book which starts to make Akani feel that he is being too mean to her. As she continues to talk to him she keeps on looking at Akani, and Himari ends up being honest to him saying that she continued to waste an hour on the book, but she still didn't understand anything at all. Then when Akani looks at Himari to see that she is being read the book by Huju and both of them are having a quality time together, she starts to feel embarrassed. Then suddenly, Shisei comes in like a robot only to claim that Himari is good and it ends up shocking Akani who is focused on Himari and Huju. Shisei thinks that Himari is good at handling her big brother as he loves teaching other people, and he also loves getting relied on, and that is the reason why he has been taking care of her since she was small. Shisei thinks that Akani will have to learn from that as well and Akani feels weird that she is suddenly mentioning her. She knows that she is about to lose her pride if she ends up relying on Huju, and she thinks that there is no way she would do something that will make him happy in the first place. Then when Akani claims that she wouldn't do something like that, Shisei runs away from her saying goodbye as the whole crowd comes in to take her away. Then from the day, 
Himari had been coming up to Huju to learn a lot of things about the book from him, and she thanked him that she had been being helped by him. He thanks her for always helping him with the matter that Akani and he end up fighting about. As Himari claims that she would like to converse with him more, he thinks that Himari really likes him so much as a friend after all. When he thinks that she doesn't have to push herself that much, she thinks that she would love to know about him and what he thinks and while talking, Huju reveals that he thinks of her as someone who rules the class while she thinks the opposite. As they continue to talk, he ends up praising the blonde look on her which makes her feel really happy that she is being complimented by someone she likes. Himari claims that Akani and him would really suit together as she has said the same thing in her childhood when everyone else was bullying her. Himari ends up telling him that she even ended up saving her as if she was declaring war against the others bullying her in the past. As they continue to talk, Akani keeps on looking at them to wonder what they must have been talking about, and Shisei once again appears out of nowhere, only to say that they both look good together. Then when Shisei continues to praise that both of them are now together, she starts asking if she hates the idea of Himari and Huju being together while keeping a straight face at Akane. Akane doesn't know what kind of fuzzy feeling that she is having inside of her while she is thinking about it. And Shisei, on the other hand, moves on by using the wave of people once again. Akane tries her best not to feel jealous about someone whom she doesn't even like in the first place, and as her imagination keeps forcing her to think about the things that are about to happen, keeps getting her scared. The scene goes back to the past where Himari and Akani are both and they continue to talk about the matter that changing classes might change the perspective in the first place for the bullies. At that moment both of them confess to their feelings saying that they like each other and promise that they will continue to be with each other the whole time as best friends, even though they are hated by everyone. As the topic of marrying would come up, Akani claims that she is even able to avoid getting married to be with Himari, but she thought quite the opposite as she wants to get married thinking that she will get a cool boyfriend in high school. When Akani thinks that it will be betrayal, Himari states that both of them are different things but Akani thinks that the betrayal is betrayal after all, since she wouldn't be able to be friends with her anymore. Now in the present time as the class ends, Himari comes in to embrace Akani by holding her with her chest saying that she was the reason why she was able to spend that much time with Huju. Instead of explaining anything, Akani thinks that it was good for him, and Himari even goes on to explain how Huju even considered her to be his lifesaver in the first place. Not only that, but also, but he even ended up praising her for her looks, which makes her think that they both might be quite fitted for each other. Then when Akani hears it clearly, she starts to get mixed vibes out of it and keeps on watching Himari who is quite excited. She keeps on repeating that she truly likes Huju, and Akani starts requesting her to be careful since someone might hear her. As Akani had been helping her so much, she thought that she might deserve something after all, and Akani thought that she wasn't doing much after all. Himari adds that there is no way and promises that she will treat her by buying her Philia's strawberry tart so thinks of hanging out in her place in the end. But the idea of Himari hanging out in her house starts to make her feel like something wrong is about to happen, since Huju is at home after all. But she also knows that she cannot bring Himari to the old house as the house doesn't have anything at all, and she continues to get terrified about it. She then claims that her house has become a bottomless swamp and there is no way she is about to bring someone there. Himari gets terrified after hearing it but Himari knows that there is some reason why she doesn't want her to be there. She reminisces how Shisei was bragging about staying over her place and it gets Himari even more sad, as Shisei even bragged that she got to eat a lot of delicious food in her place. Then when Himari thinks that she is a bother to her, Akani tries her best to recover the situation saying that she will only be able to be the in-kitchen and the living room if it is fine for her. Himari promises that she will be buying the tart on the way to her home, and Akani thinks that she will head before so she will be able to text her the address. As Akani begins to run, she knows that she will have to make somehow Huju stay in the study room so he doesn't come out at all, and promises that she will be able to manage it at any cost. That is the end of the recap for now, please read the pinned comment about the next part.